Hey there, boys and girls of the YouTube world. Today, the Duff Dog and I are going to see if we can't get a 1961 Chevrolet Bubble Top Bel Air close to back on the road. So the backstory on this one, a coworker at the nine to five was out shed hunting where you, where you find the antlers that fall off of deers. I don't know, it's a thing, I guess. Send me a picture of this car. I was like, dang, that's a 61 bubble top. Where do I gotta go to find this? Turns out it was my health class teacher, FCS, is that what they call it now? I was sitting in their trees. They bought the farmstead in the late seventies. So this car has been sitting for 50 plus years. Called him up, he said, yeah. Get her out of there. Today, Duff Dog, Chin, I, the whole gang, we got the blue pickup, the little trailer, White Ryan, skid steer, big trailer. We're gonna see if we can't get a 1961 Chevrolet Bel Air bubble top out of the trees. And by trees, it's in the trees. We found the only trees in the entire state to have them buried in. We already snipped the fence so we could get in here. We got a real pissed off hawk over there. Pretty sure it's gonna snatch up Duff, so this might be the last time you guys see him. Merica. We're just walking up to it now and it looks like the plates say 72. So yeah, they must have put it in here right when they got it, but let's take a look. Duff's over there checking for bad guys. It's missing a fender, it's missing the doors. Oh man, it's got a V8. Oh, there is spindles on it. Is there a rear end too? Okay. Floors there. Looks like somebody converted to a floor shift. Oh, rabbit duff, get him! Get him! No, he went left. You're way off. But it's pretty cool. A uh, black car with red interior. Obviously somebody put a different hood on it at one time. Oh, it does have a rear end. It's got, it's got vented drum brakes too. I always just really like these bubble tops. 61s over the 62 is a little bit better. And this one's Pretty rare, seeing how it's a Bel Air, so it's only got the two tail lights versus the three that an Impala would have. Some old lead work there. This quarter panel is actually pretty good. Trunklet isn't terrible, but this quarter, she's a little whammy there, but Chin, he worked at a body shop for like two and a half weeks, so he should be able to knock that out. Got the ultimate set of hammers. Yeah, his man hands can knock it out. Oh, we, got, we do have door hinges on this side, so that's a plus. Are those aftermarket gauges in the middle? Are those factory gauges? I don't know a ton about these cars. Um, yeah, that looks aftermarket, don't it? Yeah, hey, that sweet floor shift <laughs> patch. The floors are actually there, though. So, I guess we're gonna go get the skid steer and see if we can't weasel this out here without hurting any trees, because Greta would not want us killing any of these dead trees. How dare you! Can you kill something that's already dead? We'll get the skid steer unloaded, set up the tripod, and then you can watch me scream at Chin from inside the bobcat. It should be great. That's his favorite part. Yeah, this could be great. <laughs> Whack that down quick, boy. Got the wild thing out here. Oh, Chin, we forgot the flannel. Even that bird's upset. We need pudding here. Pudding, can you scare yes, off yes. hawks? Get out of here, birds. Look, he's in oh yeah, Puddin's here in spirit. <laughs> For sure we're gonna lose a limb. So then you're hooking up the spindle and Duff says, hey, there's a sleepy kitty under there. Well, it's not a kitty, it's a trash panda, right Duff? Hey, 
Leave him alone. He's sleeping. He's tired. So I'm gonna hook on this spindle over here, hoping that it spins it out of the way of this tree. And then I'm gonna scream at Chin because it's hitting the tree. That's a nice hood though. Kind of. So here's our trail through the woods. Looks like we tore up some roots there. What's this, road draft tube? No, too small a diameter. Anything good here? Oh, oh, there's the bottom crank pulley. Oh, we're nice. gonna wanna keep that. that. Yeah, we'll make a nice trophy or something. There's the sleep, sleepy kitty. What's this? Park brake cable? Speedo cable, either way. Don't need those we don't have speedos or park brakes on anything. Headliner? It really wasn't sunken in that far. It might have been from this still that was underneath it. Furnace? I don't know. Uh, furnace? I don't know. Comment down below if you know what the flip that thing is. Well, now we just got to find Duff. What are these parts over here? Model T? I don't know if this is Model T, but it's from that vintage. I thought Model T's were more of a rounded headlight, but doesn't mean somebody didn't swap headlights. And there was about 90 different car manufacturers in the teens and 20s. That hawk is still trying to get you. And this was a car. There's the cowl. Oh, what is it? She's a fisher. There's a door there. Back part of the body. Must have been a GM because all the wood is gone. Oh, hey, here's a wall hanger for you, chin. Yeah, not really. <laughs> I just see the shadow of that hawk. <laughs> Freaking me out, man. Freaking out, man. You are freaking out, man. Oh yeah, that's right. That one was a Model T, I think. Yeah, see it's got the Ford script and the running boards and then the, yeah, yeah. the headlights are more concave as opposed to being square. I think it was a touring car or was it a Roadster? Oh, it's a Roadster pickup. You can see the bed back. I got that license plate, chinny chin chin, right here. Here, get in there, get it, get it. Oh, score. There's two in there. A couple in there, actually. Oh, 32. And then it's probably the 31 behind it. A 30. That's a good score. Nailed on. Oh, man. They had the uh, four by sixes in it, even. Nice. It was bumping. <laughs> it was bumping. Door missing on this side. Shoot. Oh, the door is there. Oh, it was a touring. There was where the back door was. And then they made it into a uh, pickup. There is the door shell. So anyway, we got her in the shop here. Uh, let's take a look at it, because I don't remember what we filmed for footage a year ago when we drug this thing out. Don't mind the noise. The neighbors just got their quad track out and their case planter slamming some corn into the ground. We should go check out Wet Spot Farm sometime and see what they got going on over there. Looks like fun. Oh, this people watching here is great. Oh, light bar, aluminum trailer, razor, money bags. So like I said, this is a 61. They only made the bubble top, in my opinion, in 61 and early 62. This is a 61. Most of them were Bel Airs, or most of them, excuse me, most of them were Impalas, the top of the line. This is a mid-range Bel Air. You can tell by the trim. You can tell by the way it is. You can tell that it's an Aspen tree because of the way it is. And then it's only got two taillights instead of three. The Impalas had three. Black car, red interior. Black is always cool. Red interior, eh, not really my thing. It's not a terrible car, we're missing a little bit of trim. This quarter panel is, is pretty hooied, so I'm not gonna make false hopes and say we're gonna straighten it out, but we're gonna try to make it better anyway. I hate when, hate when certain channels tell you that they're gonna do something, but when they don't, wink, wink, ICC. I did pick up some doors. Uh, Ryan from Iowa Classic Cars found those, screwed us over on them, traded them for a 59 Chevy, but they are what they are. Found a better door at Iola than what we got from him. Ryan's got a back seat for us. We don't have a front seat, but I did score some 62 to 64 buckets on an auction last week. So maybe we can sneak those in there. I do have a back glass that 
found an MSRI line chaser and a subscriber picked that up for me. And I found some really nice doors that I got to go to the great white north of Duluth, Minnesota to pick up. We're missing the door hinges on that side. We got them over here, so we might have to steal them off of a parts car. That's the reason I picked up those other two four doors. It was for parts for this car. Uh, front clip, door hinges, steering columns, maybe a bench seat, even though it's the wrong bench seat. Two doors fold ahead, four doors don't. Tail lights, bumpers, brakes, drivetrain, you name it. But those cars were, I just, I just couldn't, couldn't force myself to cut them up. So I sent them down the road. We do have that 62 four door post that's not the same as this because of 62, but I think we're gonna get the steering column out of that because the steering column for this is kind of laying on the floor. This was a three speed on the column car. They converted it to a floor shift. I have no idea where the doors went. The other thing is we don't have a VIN tag. It's missing. The VIN is stamped into the frame and hacks will tell you, just cut out the floor and you can get at it. But our floors really aren't that bad. So, since so we got this lift thing here, we're gonna try to figure out how to get the front clip off, take the body bolts out, and lift the body off. And then we'll get the V8 three speed out of there. It'll be so much easier to drop that 283 and power glide than are out of that 62 in here. How about that? So, typical rust up here. It's got a whiskey dent. It's missing the headlight bezel. Splash pans are freaking wasted. The guy who had this, Uncle Art, he was actually a prisoner of war in vietnam so kind of cool because uh it's memorial day today's saturday two days memorial day so fitting weekend to bring it in we got our saturdays are for the boys flag up today we'll put the american flag up in uh art's honor this weekend so i guess yeah i mean that's about all to show you the engine it's it, we can't do a will it run because it's missing a head i think the head is in the back of the car somebody pried the camshaft out of there by pulling the timing cover loose. I mean, who takes a used camshaft out, A, and then to do it like that? I think I torched all the brake drums, so we're gonna have to figure out brakes. We don't have a radiator, because the one from the 62 leaks, so we might have to splurge and buy one of those. And I think that one's, well, that was for a V8, obviously. I got the different water neck on them, apparently. Usually it's top left, bottom right. Anyway, we need a different one. That one's chewy. Chewy Chewbacca. <laughs> Uh, like I said, floors are, they, they probably should be replaced. You can see a little hole over there, but they're not too terrible. The quarters got a little rot in the bottom. But I think we're going to call this thing the budget bubble. We're going to try to do this pretty cheap. Like I said, I, I didn't give anything for the car. I'm going to slide them a couple bucks under the table. Just tell them I appreciate them. And we owe a Chunk a finder's fee because he found it for us. So we'll take care of you, Chunk. He watches the channel. Uh, I think I paid for that parts car. 500 bucks, 600 bucks. So we'll get the drivetrain out of that car. We'll get door hinges. We'll get wire harness. We'll get steering column. We'll get pedals. And anything else that we can use off a 62 four door post. Maybe even a seat if we really got to. I mean, I, I, I do have a bunch of money into doors. We'll be able to get rid of those extra ones. Hopefully we can get a lot of our money back out of that parts car when we go to get rid of that. You know, let's let's see if we can't do this thing for like, I mean, I mean, five grand seems like a lot, but in today's money, it's really not. And I'm probably two thirds of the way there already. But a lot of the stuff we're gonna have around, you know, um, gaskets, U-joints. Uh, we already sealed up that 283 with pretty much parts I had laying around. Um, did a tune up on it. Did uh, gaskets and seals on the bottom end and in the power glide. We're gonna have a bunch of fluids. I got new U-joints and a carrier bearing for that drive shaft. We're gonna have to do brakes. That's gonna be a big one. Exhaust, that's gonna be a big one. But, I mean, really, other than a Fender, which I do have another 61 parts car lined up, but again, it's, it's an Impala, and it's, it seems too good to cut up, so we'll see. So if you got some 61 parts you're willing to let go, and you're able to ship them or deliver them to Southeast North Dakota, or got a way to get them there, we are interested. Reason I'm going with an automatic is because that's what we got. I think it would be really cool to have like a four speed in this car. I do have some four speed stuff, but I think it'd just be easier to just whammy an automatic in there, go down the road. She's not gonna be a ripper. We're gonna keep the pedals and column and stuff and we can change it later. That's the other thing is the column is just smoked. It's taken on water and everything else. Dash is toast. I think we need door glass, we need windshield, but I think the windshield glass, easy, either you can get new or they're the same as the sedans. But let's get to ripping into this thing. I'm excited. All right. Oh, this strap held on for years. That's good. Clearly this hood has been swapped at one point. This 
this ratchet strap is not happy about life. Plates there, 1972. 50 years exactly. Oh man, this foot hinge is uh, folded over in the wrong direction. So that's no good. Let me show you what we got going on over here. I don't know how this happens. I'm sure it has nothing to do with the fender being unbolted. But this strap should stay straight with the top, and she's tacking over right on top of the bolt we need to remove. So I don't know what we're gonna do there. And then we're gonna need a hood hinge too, so awesome. I guess whatever car donates fender can donate a hood hinge. Or maybe we can straighten that back out and weld it. But I don't know how we get the bolt off. So maybe we'll just unbolt this whole hinge. How about that? How about that? How about that? Yeah. It's loose. This will surely please my back. Oh, mother truckers. Well, Duff and I, we talked it over, and we're just gonna give her a little nipsy do on the backside, and then that'll cause the spring to do spring things and probably shoot in my face, but at least we'll be able to get that bolt out and salvage the hood. We're gonna put the safety glasses on, four sparks and spring action. All right, let's spring into action here. Tell me this is gonna end badly. God, Whew. wasn't so bad. Now in theory, all we would have to do is you know, get that halfway straight, and weld it back together, but I think we'll, we'll try to find a better hinge. But this is the budget bubble, so if we're gonna make it work, we most certainly will. So I think the core support can probably stay, and we get that fender off, and we're gonna lift the whole body off, right? Sure. Look at that, they even saved us the fuel pump after they snapped it off. Get yourself one of these. Hood prop rods, they weren't good for holding hoods up and holding brake pedals down for checking brake lights and all kinds of good stuff. Better yet, get two. I was admiring how the hood hit the mirror over here. Now well, it's got bullet holes through that. So kids went and shot all the glass out of this thing, except for the bubble top side glass, which is good. But they didn't, I don't think, put a single hole in the body, which is even better. Happy about that. The guy that I got it from, his wife, who was my FCS teacher, uh, they had two girls. One of them was actually a classmate of mine. I think she was valedictorian. Smart kid. So yeah, they probably weren't out shooting it. So I'm guessing this is random kids in the early 70s that did it before they moved out there. Or between 72 and 77 or whatever when they moved out. Anyway, let's see what we gotta take to get a fender off. Oh boy, looks like a lot of bolts. A lot of bolts. What's going on back here? Did they torch that up too? Yes, yeah, steering's halfway disconnected, but still kind of left half of it there. I don't know. We're gonna find a lot of stuff, I think, with this car. These two are spinning, so I somehow gotta hold those with the wrench. And a couple of these come in from the back side, which has got me wondering. You know, they took the doors, took the fender. That hood was good, so I'm guessing that was put on was still running, but this was probably a pretty decent car since how they got the doors and that fender. I'm guessing the fender they took was nicer than this one. Who knows? Wish this car could talk. Art's not around anymore, but he had some stories. These little buggers, you're gonna have to get with a ratcheting wrench. And these, I'm gonna see if I can't put a locking pliers on and try to spin them. And then there's one more going from the bottom of the dog leg up, and those always spin. That's spinning too, so we're probably going to have to cut the head off of that one. Hopefully we can salvage the rest. I just laid under there and got a whole bunch of rust in my face. Had to take the headlight basil out. There's a couple of bolts going this way into the core support, a bunch underneath bolted into the splash pan. Just miserable. 
Couple broke. I only had to cut this one. I don't think it's gonna come off, but we're gonna try anyway. I shouldn't have doubted myself. A couple push rods fell out of the inner fender when we were carrying it out, no big deal. All these bolts, plus a couple more, minus the hood bolts. Holding that frickin' fender on. Can you believe that? Over-engineered, wouldn't you say, Duff? He won't even acknowledge me. Should just be two bolts. Holding this core support on. Let's lift the body up in the air and chassis. Let's see what we gotta fight down there. The problem we're gonna have is with this X-frame dipping away in like that, I don't know where we're gonna lift on the frame. We're gonna have to lift on the body, which is fine when we're lifting it off, but when we get it on the air to take the bolts out, that's gonna hose us up. We should just cut a hole in the floor like that hack in Iowa, huh? Nah, let's do it right. Also, I don't have new body mounts, so hopefully we can salvage those. Budget, hockey pucks, right? They're probably more expensive than body bolts. And nobody plays hockey up here. Well, you gotta get it further north. Well, let's see how this lift thing works. I can tell you're gonna be tons of help. Shall we see what we got going on under here? There's those 1972 plates. Well, 70 plates with 72 tags. You can see she was sitting up to about right here in dirt. Look at that, you turn the wheel, drum stays stationary. How neat is that? How neat is that? So I'm thinking we're just gonna go with a disc brake setup because I don't, I mean, the backing plate's probably not in very good shape. Oh, these control arms are not in very good shape. Ugh. This is gonna be terrible. Cross members. She's a little whammoed up. Whammy! I'm sure all the tie rod ends are just fine. Oh dear. She's got the twist in lift kit. Ugh, those things are another thing that should have never been invented. Looks like the engine mount is blowed out on both sides. And that may be because, oh, there's no transmission to hold up the engine. Yeah, I don't think this one was gonna run, kids. That's the oil pump. And there's the crank and rod journals. Drain plug's still there though. Oh, they cut that hole with a torch. Lucky that didn't cause a dash fire. Cut her plenty big too. Oofta. That floor support's gone. This one's pretty good. This floor's got a little rot in it. What, what, what holds this body on? There's those ones up front. We gotta take the clutch linkage. What's left of the steering park brake? We're good at cutting those. Nothing here. Is there really no bracing or bolting going on all the way till you get into the trunk? Huh. I was able to pick up on the frame. So technically we could take all the bolts out right now and not die. Hey, the fuel tank ain't rusted out and it's half unbolted. What are the odds that's any good? Trunk pan, rotted out. Tailpipe, rotted out. Yeah. We got our work cut out for us, pal. Park brake's already unhooked, so we're golden there. Frame looks pretty good. I mean, I've seen worse. Okay, I'm gonna try to find the body bolts. I'm guessing there's two right back here. Yep. And then two here, two there, and then really nothing all the way up to the front. No wonder these things were so structurally weak in collisions. Hey, they got this little spline, or spine, whatever you want to call it. Well, that doesn't very strong. And then they got nothing holding it to it. Crazy. How many of these are gonna spin on us? Probably all of them. If I was gonna bet. Cutting a hole in the floor is looking better all the time, ain't it, Duff? Well, let's see how this goes. Well, let's turn the old BDBH up to 11. Don't snap. And spinning. Oh, how did I know that was gonna happen? Well, Duff and I talked it over. So there's an encapsulated nut right below that bump. One of those on each side. It's on the back side of this inner fender up there. And then right up there on that side. So we'd have to cut the floor open 
in six spots back here just to get at those nuts which if you're gonna put new body mounts in that'd be that's what you got to do if you want to put it on a rotisserie whatever we're gonna throw in the towel on doing that and we're gonna we're gonna hack the floor up i figured we got to cut the floor either way we might as well cut it where we need to find the uh marking on the floor for the bin four pans are easy enough to fix we gotta do some floors back here anyway i need some cleaning back here maybe teach duff how to run a vacuum cleaner so now to take an educated guess on where that frame is going to be stamped so that we don't hack up any more floor than we need to we'll have to go on the interwebs do a little research all right it's kind of hoping to get this frame out and then pressure wash the crap out of it because it's got so much dirt under there but i guess that ain't gonna happen let's uh get a door out of our way and do some digging see what we can find well based on one sketchy picture on the internet yep. There's a doubler plate that comes in about right here where it ties the spine together. And it should be about a hand's width ahead of that. So that's what we're gonna try to do. I mark this underneath or cut it underneath so we know this is the inside of the frame rail. Of course it's gotta be on the you know good spot of the floor pans that we're cutting. It'll make it easier to weld back to it, right? That's what I'm telling myself. Shoot, there's a cross member right there that I forgot about. Well, screwed up again. Glad this isn't a virgin 409 four speed car. Now, let's do a little cleaning. Hopefully, we can find some numbers. Maybe. This is going well. Who's got a good way to find numbers etched in a frame rail? I'm not using a wire toothbrush on the whole dang thing. <clears throat> I'm not seeing anything there. Well, let's see what we got behind door number four. A lot of frame rail. Hopefully that's caught up far enough. All right, come on, the number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven digits is how many I can read. So there you have it. It's pretty much starts right at the back of the transmission crossover. And then goes to about three, four inches the other side of that. It looks like it starts with a J2. I have to clean it up a little bit more to make it a little bit more legible, but at least we got a VIN number now. Now I wonder if it matches the VIN on the block. Let's see if she's numbers matching. There is no VIN number on the block. It's another one of those FI. Does that mean they're replacement engines or what? Oh, look, they had one of them plastic oil pressure gauges and the line cracked off imagine that okay cool now that i got that we can order a new replacement vin tag and get a title that's how it works in north dakota here you got to get a vin inspection so somebody will have to come look at that number verify that's the number on the car I have to get a notarized bill of sale from the owner a notarized piece of paper saying that this is the car i have this is how i got it and about 18 other pieces of paperwork and then you wait two months and you hope you didn't screw anything up along with four pictures of the car and a picture of the vin okay so the last seven of the vin are on the frame and the first five are the year which is one and then 637 which is bel air sport coupe uh 1737 would be an impala sport coupe just that easy Easy to identify these cars by the VIN number. The first digit is the year. Anybody could figure that out, except for us. Gosh, where's this cowl is out of the way? Oh. There you go, we got this boat anchor out of there. I don't know that there's much worth saving. Maybe that clutch stud and the clutch brack tree, bell housing, maybe that ram horn manifold. 
Looks like they got all the head bolts out, except for this bottom row, because the manifold is in the way, I don't know. Yeah, there ain't much there. No starter. And I'm pretty sure she's smoked. I'm guessing it's standard bore, since how it was only 11 years old when it was parked, maybe? What do we gotta do here before we can stab a new one in? Probably should pressure wash it, eh? No, I mean, it looks like you need a part, eh? Well, yeah, when it's fixed, we can celebrate, but let's deal with first things first. Because you guys know how much I love doing that. Yeah, let's do some cleaning. The trunk is pretty much vacuumed out. And I figured since we're gonna wash this thing out, we should empty it out. So take those doors out once we get it off the lift here. But I think we're gonna find out if that 62 dash will fit in here because obviously we're missing gauges and whatnot. And I'm sure the harness is all butchered up because somebody really started taking stuff apart in here. And we also gotta get the pedals out. So let's take the dash out and we'll get those pedals out and then we'll be ready to do some washing. Also, this is an aftermarket shifter boot, just like I thought. It's got four screw holes. I guess the originals were five screw holes, and according to Iowa Classic Car Ryan, they're worth big bucks. Six holes is what the aftermarket ones, or the replacement reproductions have, and they're not worth much, but boy, I think you could reproduce that with five holes pretty dang easy. Okay, let's get a dash up. Let's do some dashing things. Those screws are gone. Looks like they just forgot these bottom ones. We'll do our speedo cable with a little bit of wire harness. Looks like we just got one clip on the wire harness. So just that easy. You guys had it so close to being able. Now, let's get our pedals out of there. I think it's just one screw up there, maybe two. A couple, two, three screws back there, up there, around there, whatever. And I think she's ready to come out. There we go. Easy lemon squeezy. Probably just leave the HVAC controls in here for now. Son of a biscuit, they even robbed all the fuses out here. And the bulbs. Picked her pretty clean. Well, I think I'll take that harness out here. One less thing flopping around. That's for the wiper. We'll leave that in there. Zip tie that guy up for now. We might as well take this crappily installed shifter installation plate doohickey because. Yeah, that's just terrible. And we'll have to fix that at some point. How gracious of them to use galvanized so it would never rust out. They weren't even good at running a torch. Look at how many times they had to drill a hole before they got one to sink in. Dang. Yeah, that's gonna take some work to fix. They didn't even really seal it up, did they? Heck no, they didn't. Why would they? Okay, now we just gotta get the doors out and she's ready for the pudding washing. All right, now we just gotta let her air dry out. Oh man, do I love pressure washing. So does Duff. He loves it so much that he disappeared. And this is why we hate pressure washing. Because I look like a Dalmatian. Did you mistake me for a Dalmatian? Not a good pun. I'm gonna go get cleaned up. I'm gonna sweep up the floor a bit here before we roll this thing in. And then we'll put the 283 back on the power glide so we can slippity slop that right back in the hole, eh, Duff? Yeah, you're not interested. I bored you to death with pressure washing. What is this? Oh, Volkswagen. B 
bug with white spokes. People watching along the highway, it's, it's pretty epic. Don't you think, Duff? Well, we got Daisy here helping us now. In the chin, expert help. Yeah. Let's see if we can't slip that in there. I got that thing bolted together. I need to bolt the torque converter to the flex plate quick, and then we'll stab it in there. What good news is, with the gaping hole in the floor, Clappy Chin over here can reach through and give her the whole heave-ho over the cross member. How's that drive shaft taste there, Daisy? That didn't even take that long for you to fall asleep. Had a wrestler in a little bit to get the engine mounts where they needed to be situated, but looks looks pretty good in there. Now we're gonna put it on the hoist, get the transmission cross member bolts in, and see what we can figure out for a drive line, and then we'll uh, figure out steering and such. Yay! Super good. Daisy Duke, what'd you do? Puked all over three times. Anyway, we got the transmission cross member in place. We did, it was, it was missing one of the bolts, so it was kind of hanging there sketchily. And it was in this top hole for the three speed. We moved it to the bottom hole, and it seems like the automatic, it's got a little bit more breathing room on the top side there. And then we got her. Two 716 bolts there. These are also 716. So then we managed to snap that one off. Oh, are those pinholes? Yep. <laughs> Never mind. That's not structural. It's fine. Looks like it got hooey there a little bit. Chin and I were just talking. The uh, lower control arms on this car are they're pretty pitted up. So are the tie rod ends and stuff. So. Might be, might be good to find a donor chassis for this thing, if we get to that point. But uh, let's drain this diff, because I'm sure that's going to be real good. And then... No ending! No ending! No ending! We will... What the heck? The shocks all of a sudden decided to start... Shocking? Leaking oil. And the, and the axle bearing decided to start leaking. Look at all that oil running out of the shock. Weird. I bet I was pressure washing it and it was just enough rust holding it all together. But yeah, again, these lower control arms are so rusty. Backing plates are freaking wasted, so it's 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 going swimmingly. Has it got a posi? No, oh no, definitely not. Dang it. All right. We're gonna see if we can't find some type of socket to strip this out with. Daisy, you're, you're almost as much help as Delph. Water? Ooh. I don't know what it is, but it wasn't water. Mm. It may have had some in it. Definitely had some water in it too, though. It's synthetic, I'm sure. The old Swedish nut lathe. What was that? Oh, yeah. Like a champ. A big jobby. We're gonna treat her right. It's a fresh 80-90. Chin's got the pump action down pat. Well, since we gotta put shocks in, we might as well get some air shocks for it, huh? Hydraulic, hydros? <laughs> I bet that breather's not plugged up either. We'll put a wrench on that and try clearing him up too. Now we got the Diffy overhaul with some fresh oil. Let's put some U-joints in the carrier bearing in this kid right here. Fun times. 
Well, that torch didn't want to cut for me, so we're gonna we're gonna use the old ball joint press. This is a power built model six four eight six one seven. Everybody brags about them, so we'll see. So here's the plan. You just put that on there and it just blasts it right out. That's what the internet says anyway. And the internet knows everything. But we'll screw it up. So easy a caveman can do it. It's so easy to use Geico.com, a caveman could do it. <laughs> what? Oh no, I not cool. I didn't and these got to be lined up. They can be 90 off, but we're going to mark this so we know what goes where. Otherwise, you get a shimmy. Sometimes shimmies aren't good. I think we got to press that off. Now, we're going to go put this thing in the press matic to get this carrier bearing off. Should be fun. Alright, we got our collar on there. We're gonna try to slip it in here, but it's not gonna slip. Okay. Now we're we gonna have enough throw. Probably not. We'll give you a little press a roo. I always wear safety glasses and make sure you've got a fresh change of underwear in the car ready to go for the ride to the hospital. Woo! That one puckered up my butthole! Oh, that one puckered up my butthole! Got it! Chin's gonna go change his drawers after that. You gotta make sure to put these washers back in there. And we're gonna get a new bearing. You can buy like just this bearing and replace it. What is this new departure? Made in the USA. Sounds like a sweet 80s jazz band. Uh, uh, that's baby making music, that's what that is. Yep, we gotta put that back on, and then we'll press the new one on, and we'll put that guy on there, and then we put the yoke on, we tighten it all up. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Looks like we got a Marmon Ride Control A6035 here. It's, it's probably going to be the wrong one. That's, that's the story of my life with parts lately. Looks the same. The bolt dimensions the same. Yep. Eyeball the diameter. Looks good. Don't forget to put the washer on. And then you slide that on. And I think... It should just all it should just be able to bolt it together with the bolt. I don't think we gotta use the press. That's depressing. <laughs> How would we do that? We'd have to have something on the bottom holding it to press against. But it looks like it's already pretty close to snug. It's fully seated, and then it's gonna get fully seated with the bolt. Yep, we're gonna use that's the final answer. We're using the bolt to put it on there. Okay, we got our white stripes lined up. We better turn her down from four or we're gonna make a mess of this thing. I'm gonna be happy about it. Torque her down to 17 Ugga Duggas. It is seated against the washer, so we are good to go. Where's that thing going? Frickin' nowhere. He's going nowhere. So now, which end went where? Well, this side was the end I started torching on, so that's gotta be the uh, yoke. All right, we just gotta make sure we get all of our uh, grease circs lined up with one another.
We got her back together. Had a couple of hang-ups. We got one needle screwed up, but we got her all back together. That ball joint press works works all right. So let's slide this in, and we're gonna have to find some U bolts because I think they're missing for the uh, drive shaft. And then we're ready to put some fluid in the transmission and all kinds of other things like steering and a seat and a gas tank. They're pretty much ready to go. Pretty much. Go for a ride, Daisy. Not that much excitement there, I guess. She's broke. Here's our next debacle. The yoke is rusty. And I'm sure those threads are awesome, so we get to chase those out too. And who'd have thought pinion seal is leaking like crazy? Imagine that. 50 years of laying in the dirt. Well, I guess I'll use some threads. So the fun part is fishing this through that spine and the frame while also keeping that hanger bearing pointing straight down so that you can get the hardware back in it. It's a real treat. Slide in our slip yoke. Uh, maybe. Oh, let's get that nice new seal on it. It's good and tight. Now we gotta try to line up this kid. Okay, right. Oh, right there. Right there. Money Nailed. in the bank. Nailed it. Oh, hardware with no marking on the end, so you know it's nothing but the finest foreign materials. That's great, eight. Yeah. It really doesn't slide up front. I don't know where it slides on these. That's the only spot I can slide, but when you bolt it here, you can't slide back there. So let's just pivot up and down at that knuckle there. So I guess we're just gonna put it at about in the middle of these slots. Oh, good. Hopefully this end fits in. It was at this moment that he knew he fed up. No. Only one that I see. The other one is right there. In the dirt. Of course it's in the dirt. Nothing to see here, just, just putting needles back in a brand new cap. If you haven't done this before, you haven't lived. Drive line is in. Let's get this thing on the ground. Some transmission fluid in it. I'll hook some steering up. Yeah, let's get some steering and some pedals. Although you got some pretty sweet Flintstone shoes on. They're coming through. Check these dashes out, Duff. Apparently, 61 and 62 dashes are the same. I'm, somebody's probably got a difference. I know there's an early 61 dash. I had a guy messaging me one time, pretty much just wasting my time. But. What we're gonna do is just slap this 62 dash in there because ain't nobody got time to swap all these gauges and stuff over. Ain't nobody got time for that. And if we really wanna get crazy, we can slide some aftermarket gauges in this 61 dash and then slide it back in there. This dash is just in better shape and everything's all together on it, pretty much, other than the radio and the ashtray and the glove box, which is not together on this one either. Yeah. I would have never thought that 61 and 2 are the same because I know 63 and 64 are very similar cars, but the dashes are different. I think. I don't remember. Okay. We're going to put this one in there. Man, you're already napping on me again. Before we can put the dash in, we're going to slide the pedal assembly in there. And then we're going to put the wire harness out of the 62. Because, I mean, if the dashes are the same, the harness has got to be the same, right? We're going to make them the same. And then we'll slide the column in.
pedal assembly in, harness is in, ready to slide a column in. Chin unbolted the lift plate and cleaned up the mating surface with a super scraper. Daisy's coming over here to inspect our work. How's it look there, Daisy? Right. Duff will check it over for you. He's pretty proud of that bone though. Getting pretty close. I'm gonna go round up a gasket for that. Maybe we can stick the carb on it. Then we can figure out our throttle linkage. Surprisingly, this one isn't stuck. Maybe she's a little stiff though. Probably put some coil on that. Yeah, get a steering in there and some more wiring. Maybe some flex hoses. Coming along. Little chin bailed on us, huh, Duff? Guess he had to go home and grill out for the old lady. We got the steering column in and hooked up. How neat is that? That's pretty neat. We got the carburetor and a new gasket installed. We got our throttle pedal all lubed up so it returns. We got most of our kick down hooked up. Forgot to put that on the bell housing before we installed it. So that was kind of fun to get those bolts in. Way easier without a fender in our way though. Still got to finish up putting some bolts on the steering column. And then we got to go and hook up our shift linkage and our kick down down there. We're getting closer. It's just half as fast. Well, it's, you know, way more than half as fast. Chins. He's good help, but let's be honest. We're not all more skis here. So I'm going to get this thing up in the air. And we're gonna hook up that shift linkage, get that adjusted. That might take some work because there's a different bracket on the frame between stick cars and automatic cars, I think. We're gonna find out. I chiseled the bracket off the other car, so we got options. And then, I don't know, I guess we're getting pretty close, so we just gotta hook up some wiring maybe and uh, loop some radiator hoses, maybe stick a radiator in it, maybe not. Hook up a boat tank, we'll be whipping donuts in no time. Yeah, right, wishful thinking. This up here is that bracket I was talking about for the automatic conversion. I chiseled that off the frame. It's kind of like this bracket, only different. But, so this is the pivot point for the shift linkage of the transmission. We just gotta line those two up so that they're riding on the same plane. Maybe we gotta bring it down just a hair. I just got this scrap metal in there so I could clamp onto it because I can't clamp it up there because then when I go to shift, my seat kind of hits that. But, we're gonna move that just a little bit and then we're gonna go fetch up the welder and we're gonna burn it in there. Also, things that I despise to go with Craigers and Mickey Thompson valve covers and side pipes, and white letters, flexi hoses, floor shifters. You know, if you got a, a real fast car and you're going to the track and you need a bang shifter for doing whatever it is that you do at the track, go for it. Or if you got, a 34 Ford, which never came with an automatic. All right, we'll let her slide. But if you got a 1961 Chevrolet Bel Air bubble top and you converted it and you were too lazy to round up this bracket and see so you put a, went the cheap way or you got a 55 Chevy, which you could buy a steering column for and you put a floor shifter in, it's just so cheesy. I, and they don't match the rest of the car. I mean, if you got the right car, it maybe blends in, but. That's what really grinds my gears. Floor shifters. Automatic floor shifters. Ugh, b and mega shifters. Barf. So there you have it. That's what grinds my gears. You know what really grinds my gears? Okay, rant over. I'm gonna adjust this a bit and then grab the welder. Mark, reverse, neutral, two, one. Final answer. Final answer. So this is the final answer heard all around the world. He's won a million dollars. Hot. There you go. She's burned in there. Now we just got to put our spring and washer and clip collection on this, and then shoot our shift linkage up to the top. And we'll be gear jamming in no time. Also, you know, I'm ranting about column shifters and you know, go fast guys, gotta have floor shifters. I think last week or this week on Roadkill Garage, Freiberger took the Crusher Impala and ran it like a 10 something with a column shifter. Yes, it acted up on him. 
and they've had it happen several times, but it can be done. Okay, I'm gonna get back to work now. We got our shift linkage hooked up up to the column, so we'll go up there and test it out. I'm pretty confident in it. Can't really screw that up. Never mind my welds there. It's gonna hold. We also put our greasy, grimy gopher gut transmission cooler lines on. They're all tight. Of course, our freaking drain plug is leaking. Why wouldn't it? Because the rear end's leaking. I mean, whatever. The whole thing might as well leak. Looks like the Oh, that oil filter might not be leaking. It's not leaking coolant though, because we don't have any in it. Not the radiator that we got leaks though. Let's set her on the ground and see how good she shifts. Here we go, moment of truth. Reverse, neutral, drive, low. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Man, we're getting close. Fuel, wiring, top off some fluids. Oh, what is this? Oh, late model Dodge. Boring. Stuck our old crusty 62 leaker in here. I didn't put the fan shroud on because it's gonna have to come off at some point anyway. Also, I don't have any better radiator hoses. Well, I probably do, but I ain't gonna look for any because it's all gonna come apart. We'll get some new ones of those coming. Fans on, uh, as you remember, we didn't have brackets for the generator, alternator, whatever. So I'll have to go dig through my stash, see what I can come up with there. And also, we're gonna have to take and pull these two heater hose fittings out because I'm sure the heater core is going to leak and I mean we probably need some heat since we don't have any glass but we'll be fine so I'm going to see if I can't get those out without breaking anything and I'll put some plugs in there you can plug these you don't have to loop them transmission cooler lines you have to loop the more you know You kids know I'm a stickler for battery cables, so let's stick some new ones on too while we're at it. We need a battery cable sponsor. These things are not cheap anymore. We're running out of our inventory. So when I got the car, I don't know if it was inside it or in the trunk or whatever, but this battery tray was in there. It's clearly for this car, it bolts up, but I think we're supposed to mount to the inner fender or something, and that's missing, so we're just gonna have to ratchet strap something for now. But we're getting pretty close. Also, I was looking at this frame rail when I was doing the radiator, and she's pretty wavy. This thing has definitely been in a front end collision. You can see how oblong those holes are. She's been fixed at one point. And maybe they were in the process, maybe maybe they schmucked it up and they were trying to fix it and that's why this fender's off and they gave up on it. Who knows? But yeah, she's definitely buggered up over here. That side looks good. Maybe just a little kink, but this right front definitely took the brunt of it. Questionable decisions may have been made at some point in this car's life. But the firewall and everything looks good, so I guess that frame horn took the brunt of it. Clearly the bumper's been replaced. Yeah, well, maybe, I don't know, maybe they tweaked it. Hard to say, but if it hit it that hard, I would have. I would feel like this would all have been mangled pretty good. Also, uh, the core support bolts that go through the radiator were kind of tweaked, so maybe there's some tweakage in this core support. Oh yeah, you can see she's been, she's been worked on before. And then down here, she's kind of buggered up too, so. Yeah. Anywho, yeah, a little bit more wiring. We're getting we're getting close. I have to figure out some ratchet strap action on this guy though. 
would you look at this disaster ratchet strap kind of sucking the battery in but also holding her up you know it's like when you suck your gut in for a family picture and then we got our coil wire we got the handy dandy loser switch i dumped a gallon of atf in there and we got another gallon because it's probably going to take more and i found out why that hose clamp is there uh, apparently there's a crack in that filler tube and that's causing a small puddle on the floor so would have been a great opportunity to replace that when we uh had the transmission out but live and learn maybe should have taken that hose clamp off and investigated anyway uh boat tank in the passenger seat good thing there's that gaping hole in the floor i think we did that in that 60 impala that had the floor shift conversion we got our fuel hose routed through that now one wire hooked up to that same coil wire that this is Psh, resistor we don't need no stinking resistor ground is hooked up to the uh bracket for the coil don't worry we don't have the body grounded out but there's no electronics other than the fuel pump, the ignition, and the starter. So let's see if it all works. Touch that to there. Fuel pump's running. You got any squirty squirt? I can hear it filling up the bowl. Oh yeah, she's squirting. Let's see if we get some ignition. Oh, I guess that float stuck again. What are we gonna smack that with? Seems like overkill. Oh yeah, a real hammer. Fixed it. Now if that just doesn't flame up, burn the shop down. Let's not have any fires in this shop. Who am I kidding? Let's see what happens. I'm sure the timing's just fine since how we moved the distributor around. I don't really want to check for spark with all that gas around. Seems a little retarded. And yes, you can say that about ignitions. So, if it spins clockwise, we're gonna spin it counterclockwise. She seems a little lazy. Now let's try it. Already sounds better. Too much advance? She revs a lot better though, that's for sure. Well, not too bad, now that we got a little heat in it, let's get her revved up again. Should probably turn that idle up and check the transfusion fluid. What say you? Turn the idle down. 
Sounds like you got a hog cam in there. I think we got enough heat in there for not having a fan or any coolant in it. So I think that's, that's where we're gonna wrap her up tonight. I'm gonna go get cleaned up. Yeah. So I guess I brought this thing in, started working on it late on Saturday night. We started kind of messing around with it a little bit, pulling that fender off, cleaning it up. Chin showed up today. And we worked on his car for part of the day. And I assembled that transmission for a little bit. I mean, two guys in a good day, you could have something like this on the road. Granted, it's, it's got a long ways to go, but I mean, I probably don't have 12 hours into this thing. You don't count all the time that I got in stripping the other car out. Anyway, you got a couple of good weekends. You can go a long ways. Now we need to get some coolant in it. We need brakes, but we can do donuts in the yard. I need somebody to help me hang a door, or we gotta get creative with the cherry picker. We get some seats in it. I should probably do that before we uh, get doors on it. This thing could drive on its own, technically, tonight. It's pretty awesome. I'm gonna drink a sandwich of that. We don't have any sandwiches in here, because we, we don't have a beer fr fridge, so times are tough. So I'm gonna have to go inside and get one. All right, see you guys in a bit, which is tomorrow, a national holiday. I'll be working on it. I can guarantee it. That's what happens when you don't have a life. These old cars just consume it. See you tomorrow. All right, it's a really dreary, noisy, rainy, windy Memorial Day. So we've been picking away at a couple of small things. Uh, wrapped up putting that steering column mount and boot on there. Got the wire harness on, so I gotta hook up the starter wires. Got our headlight harness run up here we got our voltage regulator mounted what else did we do that's about it it's been pretty slow today also i was out looking at that 62 and i think that that 62 front clip will bolt on here that's a pretty decent front clip other than a little rust on the dog legs the fenders and then uh where the license plate goes that valance kind of whammoed up but i think we can straighten that out some debate in putting that clip on here i don't really care for a 62 front clip. I mean, I don't mind them, but it really bastardizes this thing in my opinion, but it's what we got and it'll fit. So comment down below if you think we should put that 62 clip on there, hold out for a 61. Cause if I get a clip on it, then I can park it outside. I really don't like the whole tarp over the engine thing. And then plus if we put the cluster in there, then we gotta worry about that getting all wet. I wonder if 62 windshield, we could put a used windshield in there. I wonder if a 62 sedan windshield. I don't know. Speaking of clusters, this is a cluster here. Not the good kind, right, Duff? Joey, he sent us this handy dandy tool. We can't read his name on there anymore. For taking these ignitions apart. And I think we're gonna we're gonna swap everything over. And that way we got the red dash in there and everything kind of matches. So that's what we're gonna do now. It's gonna be fun. No, it's not. It's gonna be miserable. I just got a feeling. Okay, you guys can watch me do it in the uh, Super high fast motion speed isms. We got the cluster out, 34,000. I'm guessing 134. Okay, we got everything pretty much swapped over. Don't we duffle up, I guess. Yeah, we used the cluster out of this one. This one's got like 54,000 on it. And we get the rubber on there because you always want to use your rubber, especially when it's a questionable old maid like this. So this thing should be ready to stab in there. It's gonna look way more gooder. So we're doing some wiring on here because, you know, 
let's let's see if we can't get the start from the ignition switch. They had, as you remember from the previous video, they had cut the purple and the green wire, the one that goes to crank starter up, the one that goes from the starter to the coil. So I was splicing those and I found some. So you remember how this thing had been hit up here? You can see how she's wrinkled. And you see a lot of terrible welds, that's just stuff you see. And then I was looking at this lower control arm mount and how absolutely terrible those welds were. So then I went over and looked at this side. You know, they're not a lot better, but they're better. But there isn't all these booger welds down here. And you see how this outer piece is just boogered into this inner piece? It even looks like some bronze in there. So then I look closer. And you see how this bracket mounts to the frame? And you see how it tore out? Yeah, that ain't good. So we need to weld that up. And we also should probably keep our eyes open for a frame. Because I don't want to stick a bunch of money into this thing. And just find out we can't align it. So maybe that's why this twist-in spring adjuster is on this side. And... Uh, not on the other side. So there's definitely a lot more to this saga. Yeah, not only is the frame twisted, it's tore out and everything's pitted here. So I, I'm just debating what to do here. We can steal that frame out of that 62, but then we really kill that car, which it's already pretty much dead. I don't know. This project's snowballing as they all do. So that happens, I guess, when you get a free bubble top out of the wood. And maybe we can just weld that up and it probably would be just fine, but definitely should be welded up. All right, I'm gonna finish wiring this up and then we'll go put the dash in or something. Or maybe start drinking, I don't know. Okay, so kind of tied in with the wiring. We need to get an alternator on this thing. This 62 had a generator. I think 63 was the first year of the alternator. Went through all my brackets thinking that I would have something that would bolt to here and then I could modify a generator bracket, but I don't have any brackets like that. I couldn't find any. The closest thing I could find is these off of 235, and then it won't allow the alternator to swing the way it needs to. So what we're gonna have to do is we need this bracket, like my Galaxy has, and bolts to the front of the manifold. Just uh, like so, I think, maybe. Anyway, this is an angle dump. That's a straight dump, but we're gonna make it work for now until I can find a right 63 64 manifold or maybe we'll have to do something different i don't know anywho we're gonna get an alternator on this thing so that that way we can get a fan belt on it so that way we can put coolant in it and that way it can all come out of the radiator and hit the fan and go back in to my face because we don't have a windshield also tech tip of the day bubble top windshields are the same as sedans some people i have a classic car ryan you didn't know that I asked him, he said, no, I'm a thousand percent sure. A thousand percent sure. He was gonna bet me his YouTube income this month, which he said is only 80 bucks. But I said, no, you keep your 80 bucks. Let's check into it. Sure enough, all 61 windshields are the same, except for convertibles. A sedan will fit into a bubble top. Station wagon, two door sedan, four door sedan, it don't matter. Okay, we're gonna get no later on. throw here I need a 15 535 belt and all I had was a 15 530 and a 545 so she's pretty taut against the valve cover but it'll work I'll get a belt on order uh, this bracket I think I think my 64 has a spot on the intake because you can tell we're about out of throw we're not gonna get much throw or adjustment you know we're losing a lot here so I think uh, we should have the right intake. It has that little boss right there with a the 3A threaded hole, and that's where that should bolt. But it's gonna work. Good enough for the girls we go with. I think that's gonna wrap her up for tonight. Short night. We had some stuff going on. Alrighty. Let's uh, go have a sandwich. Well, we went and grabbed some seats. Duff's already 
tearing the mouse nest out of them. Thinking there's something living in them. These came from an uh, auction sale on Aberdeen. I think they're out of a Buick Riviera. Well, Iowa classic car, Ryan. He says they're 62 to 64 GM. So the driver's side is power, though. So that's kind of why I picked them up. Well, I picked them up because their bucket's pretty reasonable. So we'll see if we can get them to bolt in here. What do you think about that, Duff? And on this dash, there's a million lights. I was trying to figure out what goes where. And here on the back side of this, it's labeled green, brown, blue, dark blue, blue tan, black. So I'm guessing that's where all those lights go. It goes by the wire color. And then these three across the top must all be the same color. So that'll be fun. Let's we'll see if we can't figure that out. You have to drop the column back down to sneak that in there, I feel like. And then uh, should be able to stick a seat on it. Maybe even get some doors. Who knows? A door at least. We gotta get hinges for the other side. Somebody told us that four door hinges are the same, but they also thought windshields are the same. So we'll find out. I'll let you know. Still intrigued by them seats, ain't you, Duff? Well, the cluster is in. Let's look up the battery, see if the key switch works. Odds are pretty slim it does, but we'll give it a shot. Here goes nothing. Oh, look at this. We've got some dash lights, even. I'm guessing that's, oh no, the gen lights lit up. Look at that. That's probably oil pressure. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't quite reach up in there to get those, so we're just kind of leaving them. Those are for the brake switch, I'm sure. I don't know. Neutral safety? Who knows? I think this is the neutral safety, the one that's bypassed. That little guy? Don't worry about that little guy. Oh, that little guy? I wouldn't worry about that little guy. Let's see if we got power at the coil. Well, hey, would you look at that? Power at the coil, even. This thing like fire. All right, we got our fuel pump cables hooked to the coil. I know it doesn't have 12 volts, it's gonna have like nine, but let's see if she runs. Is it running? Oh yeah. Will it fire? Oh, we gotta bump that idle up a hair. Oh, she's just about cranked. Now let's see if it's any better. Getting there. I'm sure this carb doesn't need any tuning. Switch even shuts her off. Now we gotta wire up this here alternator. And since this is internally regulated, off a 454, that's the beauty of GMs, so they're all interchangeable. And this has got a regulator on it, we're gonna have to, I think you just hook two of these together and forget about the one, or I don't remember. We'll figure it out. I'm guessing this big one, it's gotta go to the stud. 
and then we probably need to find a connector. It's probably not real integral to what we got going on right now. You get them brakes done yet, Mojo? Yeah, just about right. You ready to go for a ride? In there? Yeah. <laughs> oh, where's your seat? Right there. Seat belts? Seat belts? We ain't got no seat belts. We gotta have seat belts. We'll put a door on, on my side, your side. We'll get you a ratchet strap, tarp strap. How about that? How about a helmet? We give you a helmet, that'd make you feel better? Well, helmet and goggles. I see you don't have no windows. <laughs> it's a race car. We don't got windows in a race car. Just two back windows, that's all you got. He's picky. All right, let's figure out an alternator here. Duff is adamant that there is a critter in those seats. Let's help him out. What's in there? Did you get him? Passenger side isn't power. Driver's side is. Duff, he's been underneath the machine, all around. What are we hunting? Just a mouse? Awful lot of commotion for a mouse. Sorry, man. I mean, no doubt one was in there at one point. Silly dog. What'd you find, Duff? So we got these seats upside down, and we got holes there to mount them, right? And then up here, I don't know, they got these shoes that look like they were to slide into a bracket on the floor or something, so. Either gotta make something for that or find some different brackets, huh? What's in there? Where's the mouse? Well, that's no good. Comment down below if you know what the heck these fit. I'm thinking Buick Riviera. Passenger side is the same way. A lot lighter when they got a glass in them. Before Mojo took off for the night, he helped me mount up this door. What a freaking pain these things are. They got like this encapsulated mounting plate in there that floats way more than it needs to. It even latches. This side, on the other hand, has no hinges. So we're going to go see if we can get some hinges off that 62 four door. See if those are the same. I'll let you know. So we're back here at the 62. And maybe with a gear wrench, I can get that inside top one. Those ones shouldn't be a problem. Top one's on that bottom hinge, but these bottom two, I don't know. You're definitely not getting the front one without taking the fender off. So maybe that's why these, I bet that's why these hinges were on that car because they couldn't get the fender off, so they couldn't get the hinges. Sweet. So we might be using this front clip. At least taking the fender off. Also, a lot of comments about what this is. Whether it was for lawn chair webbing. Somebody said it was for like tying down stuff and like reefer trailers, which I think this guy, whole slip clutch was a trucker. I don't know. Military seat, helicopter seat belts, definitely way too long for a, a seat belt. I'm thinking the tie down thing seems the most logical. I would think if it was for a lawn chair, it would be cut to length and it's not. It's not narrower and it's way thicker than the lawn chair material I'm used to seeing. Also, somebody wanted the cords, so I gotta dig those out. But anyway, uh, yeah, I don't, we're not, Dust's not getting a passenger door. We don't even have a seat for him to ride on. So we could steal a seat out of this thing. Wouldn't be correct since it doesn't tip ahead like a two door seat, but at least we'd have a seat. Dang it. So we could just nab some hinges quick. I really don't want a 62 front clip, I don't think. We don't have a 61 clip, so we'll see. See what we can come up with. Okay, let's get back to the shop, figure out what we're gonna do next. You're just dead set on 
getting whatever comes out of that seat. So here's the plan. We're kind of running out of time this week. We got a lot of time in this car and not much filming. We're not going to pull the front clip off today. We're not going to swap the door hinges. We're not going to do all that. We're not going to swap the glass because I don't have a window seal. I don't, I don't have a lot of things and one of them's uh, time. I need ambition to do it right now. You are a freaking goofy dog. But we are going to put an air cleaner on it. And we're going for a ride around the block. Duff is going to have to watch from a distance because he doesn't have a door. He doesn't have a seat. I don't have brakes or a seat belt or any common sense. And Duff has an infatuation with whatever critter. Let's put an air cleaner on this. Ew. Let's bang an air cleaner out and then put an air filter on it. Find a wing nut. Find some water. Find a reindeer cap. Gosh, words are hard today. I need a sandwich. How about you? Been a long week. Okay, let's do that. Let's go for a rip. We got our seat in there. Duff thinks the critter's in the quarter panel now. Let's run this thing over the garden hose and top off the radiator. Seat's real good. Bucket seat things. Pop, 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 pop. At least I can't reach the gas pedal, so you don't have to worry about me. Getting too wild. Well, let's see if she starts. Park. Now well, we got no brakes, so use your melon, Jimmy. First time this thing's moved on its own in 50 years. Duff, we're not going that way. All right, I'm gonna top off the radiator. No door handle on the inside. Good news is, in case of an accident, we got all kinds of windows to climb out. Well, the radiator stopped off, but no radiator cap, so I guess we should know if it's overheating by the water spitting out and hitting the fan and going in our face because we don't have a windshield either.
shield in it I don't know it's a lot of work so far we're into it pretty reasonable I did the math on the steering and suspension stuff and she goes up then you got tires exhaust that's another thousand fifteen hundred two grand depending on what we go with we're gonna need shocks yeah I just want to make this thing like safe is that the word I mean roadworthy maybe all the parts are there if we take that 62. We can put the glass in it. We can take the wrong bench seat. We can do the front clip. We could get a lot of our steering and brake parts that are probably in better shape than this, but we're still gonna have to go through them. Yeah, door hinges are there. There's a lot of good, and we got a lot of good pieces out of that car. We got our pedal, we got our column, we got our drivetrain, we got a radiator that leaks, we got our wire harnesses. Yeah, we got our drive shaft. We got a lot of stuff out of that. Uh, 62. It's the gift that keeps on giving. We need some more stuff, and I wish it was a 62. I just, I'm staring at that front end right now, and it just, it don't excite me. It just don't. So, let me know what you want to see done. Should we, should we buy a cheap eBay disc brake kit? Should we get a nice disc brake kit? Should we just steal all the parts off my station wagon and put a disc brake kit and some two air control arms on that thing? Should we take the frame out from underneath that 62 and send it out and get it sandblasted and powder coated and all new bushings and the control arms and that fun stuff? Or should we just keep uh, doing what we're doing here on a budget? I think that's what we're doing. This is the budget bubble. Let's see what we can do. But for now, I'm, I'm kind of sick of it, so we're going to go work on some of this. Maybe that F1 that's staring at me, you've been sitting in the middle of the yard, we should drag that in. Get the brakes working on that, get that LS wired up. Get the thing plumbed up, get some exhaust. Find some freaking running wires. Had some wood running wires on it. Alright, enough yapping. Back to work. Stuff, he's. Ducks. He's, he's into bringing me duck eggs lately. How neat is that? We just got a 1961 Chevrolet Bel Air bubble top running and driving. It's been off the road for 50 years. That's right, 1972 this thing was last tagged. Complete basket case, no transmission, no doors, no radiator, no carburetor, no starter, no glass, no wheels, no tires. We got her back on the road. Pretty cool. All right, thank you very much for watching. Check out our other videos if you haven't already. Leave a thumbs up. Leave a comment about something or other. Check out the merch down below. I like the uh, next level tees, they're my favorite. Get them a size bigger, maybe I just got fatter. I'm an XL, but I get a double X in the uh, next level shirts. See you next week. Maybe. Kill myself putting this thing away. Remember, it doesn't matter how you get it done, so long as you're having fun. Bubble tops are kind of fun. Ooh, I do have that 61 Impala steering wheel too.